Yep, that's right, the 140 has gone, and I've replaced it with a 9-year-old Mark 7 Fiesta ST, because, as we all know, they're well faster. <laughs> all memes aside, I'm actually really impressed. I wanted a manual front-wheel drive car, and you get a lot for your money in these compared to other things in this price range. It ticks all the boxes I was after, plus you got to remember that I bought the van and still have quite a decent chunk of change left over after selling the Beamer, so it was a bit of a no-brainer for me, really. Anyway, I'll take you around it, run you through some of the pros and cons of owning and driving one of these things after coming from something bigger with twice the power, so if you're thinking of doing the same thing, or you just like watching my videos for some reason, then grab yourself a cuppa, get sat down, and let's get into it. Now there's no point in me going into detail about every little thing on this car, the Mark 7 ST has been out for 10 years now and it's been one of, if not the best selling hot hatch in that time. It's also been the most stolen hot hatch as well, so I can't wait to see what courtesy car I get in a few weeks time, but for you boys who are still suckling the milk from your mum's teats who might not be old enough to remember everything from when this car came out a decade ago, this is a quick summary of everything that you need to know. It's front wheel drive, only came with a manual box, and although the vast majority of them had a 180 brake from a 1.6 litre petrol engine, there was an ST200 edition which used the same block that came with, you guessed it, a 197 brake. So, they're selling you a little bit short there, aren't they? Not to 60 was over in 6.9 seconds, and it has a top speed of 134 miles an hour. They came in three trim levels, the ST3 being the most tricked out and expensive of the lot, but you could pick up a POV spec ST1 for as little as 17k new back in 2012. If you're looking to buy the equivalent car on the second hand market now, you can pick one up starting from about 6 grand. Right, so, onto mine. It's a 9 year old ST2, so I've got aircon and heated seats as standard. The previous owner did tick the sat nav optional extra, even though the screen is the size of a packet of fags, but it's miles easier to use than that stupid system that came in the M140i, which wanted to know what you'd had for your breakfast before letting you set off. It's only got 40,000 miles on the clock as well, so it's one of the lowest mileage examples that was for sale in the UK when I bought it. Well, on a 63 plate anyway. Now you might be thinking, why would you want to go from a mapped M140i making over 400 brake that you've just got looking the way that you wanted it to, to something with less than half the horsepower which, let's face it, just isn't as exciting to look at? Well it all comes down to money at the end of the day, doesn't it? I mean, I can try and peddle a different narrative to make me seem far more interesting than I actually am, but the 140 had to go if I wanted to buy a K truck. Now obviously a JDM mini truck isn't the best daily driver considering they don't even hit 70 miles an hour, so I wanted something fun that was fairly cheap to run so I could take it to work through the week and still blast it over the moors and film some videos on the weekend. I looked at all sorts really, JCW minis, McGann trophies, but as a package, you know, taking mileage and spec into consideration, I couldn't beat this little ST for the price. Now I did want one that was completely standard, but when I saw the Mountune badge on the back I thought, hmm, you know what, that might be worth a punt and... I think I was right. I've been a passenger in a standard Mark 7 ST before, but I've never actually driven one, so I don't know what the gains of this 215 kit is really like, but I'd imagine for the 700 quid or so that it costs new, the extra 35 brake and boost in torque that you get is totally worth it. Even better when you buy a car that's already got it fitted. Yep, there's probably cheaper alternatives out there now, but with the mount tune gear not affecting your warranty back in the day, it was most likely the best option at the time. So what's it like going from a 140 to one of these then? Well. One of the other reasons that I wanted something else was because I was sick of being left when going around the corner. The 140 was just too big and heavy to do anything other than power away from things in a straight line, and as you can probably tell, the roads that I like to go out for a drive on are far from that. You can carry so much more speed into a corner in this ST. There's not as much body roll as you get in the 140 either, so there's less chance of your braking traction because of the weight transfer, and even though they don't come with an LSD, I haven't been able to light up the inside tyre mid-corner yet, which used to happen literally all of the time on the 140. Yeah, in a straight line, the lack of power compared to the BMW is noticeable, obviously. But the ST is still fairly quick. It torques steers like a bitch at the top end of third and fourth gear, but aside from that, I'm having quite a lot of fun driving a front-wheel drive car again. It genuinely is like you're driving a go-kart. You forget how basic a hot hatch can be when you're coming from one of the hyper hatch boys. I've never really been a massive fan of the interiors that Ford fit. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The dash is better on the transit van that we have at work and that's no joke. But one thing that I do like more than what I had in the 140 are the seats. They are so comfortable. I'm not exactly the biggest lad around, but the Recaro still hug me well enough and I don't really see why you'd need to swap them out other than if you want to save a little bit of weight. The sound from the speakers is okay, I can see why the previous owner of mine went down the route of fitting a sub in the back, it's definitely a big downgrade from the Harman Kardon you get in the BM, but at least it's something easy enough to change if you want to. 
The heated windscreen is an absolute godsend. I've only got to use it once and it's worth its weight in gold, that thing. There's nothing worse than scraping the ice off your windscreen at 4.30 in the morning, absolutely freezing your bollocks off before you go to work, so that gets a massive thumbs up from me. And I haven't really owned it long enough to fully figure out what it's costing me yet, but I can tell you that I'm only going to the petrol station twice a month rather than every four days, so, I mean, you can do the maths. That's it for now though, I just thought I'd show you around what I'd bought because a few people were asking whether or not I was daily in the truck. I might do the odd video on it, I have got one or two planned, but I didn't buy it with the intention of doing a lot to it to be honest, I just want to enjoy it how it is and I was after something fun to bash over the B roads in. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments, if you do you'll be entered into the doozy car care giveaway, leave the video a like if you enjoyed it, sub to the channel so you don't miss out on any future content and join the Facebook group so you can chat all kinds of shit about cars. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!